my mom loves to tell this story, but apparently like we were at church one day and a string quartet came up and started playing. And apparently like I just got up out of my seat and started like running towards them screaming. Like, so she had to like chase me down, take me out and like had to promise me that like I could take violin lessons when I was a little older. And that's, I guess the story that I've always heard of how I started and what, you know, I guess I just loved hearing it. Um, they actually started me on piano first and realized it was a disaster because the, my piano teacher had a cat. So for the entire 30 minute lesson, I was just chasing the cat instead. I think I didn't realize I wanted to be a professional musician until much later in my life. I went to college with a dual degree program. Um, I had a lot of interests. I didn't really know what I wanted. Like I, I was definitely interested in music and that was part of my degree. But then I was also like, oh, I love the idea of arts administration. So then I went and also got a business degree. And uh, I didn't realize until, you know, probably two years into, into my studies that I was like, oh, you know what? I think I really like performing and I really love everything about being, you know, a musician full time. The concerto itself is fascinating, but what I love the most about it is the history behind it. Uh, Coleridge Taylor wrote this piece for Maud Powell, who was a personal hero of mine. Um, they both succeeded in the face of extraordinary prejudices. He against black musicians and she against professional female violinists and their collaboration together was just so perfect because they were both advocates for racial equality and had a shared passion for the violin and music of different cultures. Um, and what's really interesting is like, I was doing a lot of research about this piece as you know, I started to immerse myself in it. And apparently while they were discussing, um, you know, creating this piece together, he developed the idea of writing a violin concerto based on black spiritual themes. But when he finished composing it, they both hated it. So he threw it out and wrote an entirely new and original work, all the melodies being his own. Um, and that's the concerto you'll hear next month. Um, and even though this piece was written in 1910, it seems like it had actually been completely forgotten for quite a while until it was revived for a concert to mark the centenary of the Guildhall School of Music and Drama in 1980. And coincidentally, that's where I went to school for my master's. You know, because this, even though this isn't a new piece, it was definitely a new piece to me because I had never heard of it until our conductor, Greg Hughes was like, have you heard this? Check it out, you wanna play with us? And I was like, um, this is incredible. So what I did to kind of, you know, get familiar with this piece was just listen to every recording that I could get my hands on because, you know, when, as a violinist, we're so used to hearing like Sibelius, Dvorak, Brook, and you, you know what it sounds like before you even start playing it. But with this piece, that wasn't the case for me. It was just completely brand new. And in some ways that was really cool because it was like a clean slate. And, you know, I was able to pull inspiration from prior violinists that have played it before, but, you know, I could pull that and then make it my own completely. So during his lifetime, Coach Taylor was often referred to as the Black Dvorak or the African Mahler. And I think this concerto is a true representation of this. It's, it's so full of rich harmonies. It's, it's very grand and noble, but also like lyrical and virtuosic at times. And I truly think that this concerto would make a worthy substitute for any standard romantic violin concerto that we've like become so accustomed to. And um, with that in mind, I think the listener should keep an ear out for melodic and harmonic resonances of Dvorak's American works, especially in this first movement of the concerto. Um, also, listen for the opening triplet motif that you'll hear because it repeats itself throughout the piece in different ways. And I, I feel like that's an important message that Coleridge Taylor is trying to, you know, emote. 